let's let's just jump into what I think it can be likened some kind of digital reign of terror. Um, I I think that we the the United States is very at the moment going through a very very compressed version of the French Revolution, uh, where in pre-internet de- days these things took months or years to arrange and to to come to fruition. We're seeing these events compressed down to a very short space of time because Twitter accelerates everything, and so. I guess we'll just talk about Donald Trump being deplatformed from the internet. The president of the United States has been cancelled. So, are there any people out there who'd like to say cancel culture doesn't exist? I mean, I think we've we've got the the apex example that cannot be denied. I mean, you've got, and it was just totally incited. Obama called for Trump to be permanently banned from the internet. Basically, now is the time for Silicon Valley companies to stop enabling this monstrous behavior and to go even further than they have already by permanently banning this man from their platforms and putting in place policies to prevent their technology from being used by the nation's leaders to fuel insurrection. Thanks for helping to calm the atmosphere down, Michelle. Then you've got the next one, leftist activists who are just like, you know, this is The Verge, but this is just one of many different articles saying, oh, it's time to deplatform Trump. He incited a riot against Congress, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't really agree with their framing on what happened at the Capitol. We covered it last week. Um, we're, we're not going to go re- rehash it here. Um, so Trump was banned from everywhere. And Axios has done a complete list of all the platforms. Can we just scroll down there just to, because I didn't bother, like, you know, getting them all, but, like, you know, we've got, like, what is it, Reddit, Twitch, Snapchat, in addition to, obviously, all of the others, Shopify, uh, Twitter, obviously, Google, completely, YouTube. Uh, I think Trump's YouTube channel was still up the last time I checked, actually, but if... Uh, I assume any new videos have been deleted. Yeah, I assume so. But, so, yeah, if we can keep going, like, Facebook, Instagram, yeah, Snapchat, Snapchat. TikTok... Tick, like Apple, obviously, Discord. So now Trump can't get in our Discord server. Gutted. Uh, Pinterest. But is, it, is, this, is this just like, him or is this his entire team? Uh, the, well, the, his, his um, online presence as real Donald Trump, like him, as well as his campaign teams, his merch stores, all of it. He's just been erased from the internet. He's getting the Alex Jones treatment. Anything that was part of the campaign. Yeah, just waxed. And that that's in addition to, uh, I think it's probably dozens of high-profile conservative activists like Dan Bongino, uh, Lynn Wood, you know, whether you agree with them or not, it doesn't matter. General Flynn. General Flynn. They're, they're all being erased from the Silicon Valley platforms. Um, and when Trump tried to tweet from the President of the United States account, now this is an official government account. It is not owned by Trump. It is owned by the official government. Uh, but this is for the president's, the office of the president. Trump tries to tweet about Twitter censorship and how, you know, the gift of 230, Section 230 is allowing him to do this, etc., etc. And that gets censored. The president of the United States is censored for objecting to censorship by Twitter. I mean, this is crazy. Like, this is the amount of power that Silicon Valley have revealed themselves to have. And we knew that they had it. You know, they control the platforms. So technically, everything is at their, their pleasure. But the fact that they would go and do it, like it's like they think there won't be consequences for this, and there are going to be huge consequences for this. Like the Republicans, every Republican at this point should be sitting there thinking, right, okay, nobody's safe. Nobody is safe, and they hate us. Because they do. They hate Trump, and they hate the, his supporters, the MAGA movement, and they will expunge them to the best of their ability. Uh, Trump got cancelled in real time in Tucker Carlson's segment, and it's funny just watching Tucker react to the fact that the tweet that he was reading out was deleted as he was reading it. It's madness. Naturally, the uh, the revolution, the reign of terror, doesn't end with the execution of the king, Uh As the Atlantic posted, Trump's banned. Who's next? Oh, well, who is next? The byline. Tech giants must not treat their crackdown on the president's social accounts as an edge case. The social web should be different now. What an absolute delusional position to hold. As, and this this comes from an ideology as well, right? They lay out in this. Uh, one, of the, one of the quotes from this, it was a Friday night massacre of platform bans. They're positively reveling in what is a digital execution, like the extermination of Trump from the internet. And the, again, the elected president, they have taken it upon themselves, say, actually, we decide that the president 
doesn't get to speak to the public. We get to be the editors, the authors of that decision. And that's wrong. I mean, that's to put completely against the spirit of Section 230. Uh, the fact that they're allowed, they can still do this and claim to be platforms and not publishers is maddening to me. But even if we take them at their word for a second, their word is that, oh, well, he incited violence, therefore we're stopping him from inciting further violence sure. up to the election. That is just factually untrue. Yeah. Like, we saw the things he tweeted, we saw the things he yeah. posted in his videos, you know, factually, what he said was, go home, don't commit violence, be peaceful, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, any one of those posts from any one of those yep. platforms. That didn't matter. And they Twitter removed them. Facebook removed them. So mm. people, how how are people even going to know what he said? So there is no defense here, because no. if, if you're thinking as a conservative, I don't know, MP or something like this, oh, they'll never come for me. Literally, you can say one thing, and they will say that you said the other and ban you. Yeah. There is no defense. And I, I read through tw Twitter's reasoning on it, and Twitter's reasoning... I could only. Re I, I wish I got it up in, in advance for this, but to be honest with you, we've got too much to go through. Twitter's reasoning was just openly bad faith. You know, we are interpreting this to mean violence. We are interpreting that to mean violence. It's like, but that's not what a reasonable person would take from this. But that's where we are. We're Please not. go home. Don't commit violence. We're yeah. interpreting that as violence. Yeah, that's not a call for violence. That's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, so in this article, and this is very interesting, they give us what they call the realist take. And the realist take is the you know what rather than the idealist take where they've got the fig leaves of oh we're doing this for high-minded reasons the realist take is that, that we should consider these as arbitrary and sudden convenient decisions made possible by a changed political landscape and new business imperatives as they say in two weeks Trump will be out of power but the platforms won't be and therefore the leftists want more deplatforming because they think the platforms are still going to be there and the legacy of Trump will still be on these platforms and therefore we should force them to give up their fig leaf rationales and deplatform even more people. And at the end of this article there's a very interesting bit. Banning Trump should not be seen as the end of an era, it needs to be the start of a new one and we should not give up on the myth of content moderation that depicts a better future. What a weird way of looking at the world. They think that they can censor a better future into being. Now, I personally, as a liberal, am against censorship. Obviously, I'm against political violence. But I think that censorship and political violence have a direct causal link. Because I think that the removal of a person's ability to express themselves and put their opinion across is what makes them essentially radicalise. And so I think that what they're doing... this, And I love the way that they admit this is a myth... The myth of content moderation that depicts a bad future. Yeah, it's a myth. And the, what they link to is an article on their site called The Facebook is a Doomsday Machine. And it's really weird that they link this article. because This, this article actually totally debunks what the, the, the proposition in the previous one is. That we can use content moderation to depict a better future. Because th this one summarizes, like, it, it lays out the problem well and advises getting off these platforms altogether. It's not content moderation that can create a better reality. Andrew Bosworth, one of Facebook's longtime executives, has compared Facebook to sugar in that it's delicious but best enjoyed in moderation. In a memo originally posted to Facebook's internal network last year, <coughs> excuse me, he argued for a philosophy of personal responsibility. Anyone who's serious about mitigating the damage done to humankind by social web should, of course, consider quitting Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and any other algorithmically distorted informational environments that manipulate people. They're not saying we should have a, a well-moderated web and that will solve all problems and there will be no more insurrections generated by social media. What they're saying is get off social media because it's damaging your brain and it's an addictive substance and you shouldn't be using it. So, like, this myth that he appeals to, yeah, it's just a myth. But, uh, but anyway, the, in, the, in the spirit of following the myth of content moderation, as in censorship, being a, for, a way of creating a brave new world, Parler has been completely deplatformed. Now, if you go to parler.com right now, it's down. So this is the mass digital execution and purging of parler.com. And it's because of political reasons. So BuzzFeed frame this, like, it, they just frame this like this. People on Parler use the social network to stoke fear, spread hate, and coordinate the insurrection at the Capitol building on Wednesday. Don't agree it was an insurrection. And stoking fear, hate, and various other conspiracy theories, all that, as if that doesn't happen on Twitter. As if Twitter isn't... They're constantly trending topics are Jews, Nazi, Trump, you know, all of these radical things. And the Babylon Bee posted a screenshot of Twitter's trending topics to Instagram, and that was censored by Instagram for being too radical. It's like, there we go. Twitter is the drive, one of the driving forces of this. But um, 
But anyway, the app has recently been overrun by death threats, celebrations of violence, and posts encouraging patriots to march on Washington with weapons on January 19th, the day before the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. On Friday, Parler gave, uh, Apple gave Parler 24 hours to mitigate the planning of illegal and dangerous activities on its service or face serious expulsion. And then the next day, they said this. Uh, the trust and safety team for the Apple web service told Parler, uh, told their chief is, uh, policy officer, Amy Peikoff, that calls for violence propagating across the social network had violated its terms of service. Recently, we've seen a steady increase in the violent content on your website, all of which violates our terms. But none of that applies to Twitter, apparently. None of this, none of this applies to Twitter. It's only one way as usual. They say... It's clear that Parler does not have an effective process to comply with the Amazon uh, terms of service. It also seems that Parler is still trying to determine its position on content moderation. You remove some violent content when contacted by us or others, but not always with urgency. Your CEO recently stated publicly that he doesn't feel responsible for any of this, or neither should the platform. Well, I don't agree it's the platform's fault either. Uh, that's the point of it being a platform, in fact. The, <laughs> the people using it are the resp ones responsible for the content they oppose to it. Um, but anyway, so they, they, they go through this and they, they say that we're going to cont uh, terminate your, your, your web service. Uh, they provide the technology and customers, blah, blah, blah. So since they say Parler cannot comply with our terms of service and poses a very real risk to public safety, we plan to suspend their account. Uh, so this effectively is a way of saying to Parler, look, we don't actually care what you do. This has reduced it to a median, median dialogue, where it's just, we have the power here, and you don't have the power. And so the Athenians have turned up with their you know, 5,000 men, and the 300 millions who are on this island are like, well, okay, we'll appeal to you know the various extraneous factors, we'll appeal to morality, but at the end of the day, it's the person with the sword that has the power, and that's what Amazon is saying here. And it's pretty scary to be honest because this is where everyone is going like there have been loads and loads and loads of conservatives in the platform from everywhere nobody is safe we're not safe if you'd like to support us and make sure that we have a job you can go to loadseas.com and become a premium member we've got this great premium content scary as these times are though this was john matz's response uh he says uh, amazon will be shutting off our servers in the attempt again i can't show you the uh, i've got to get a low quality screenshot because obviously parlor has just been deleted but look at look at the number of people who have seen this 24 million people saw this post before Parla was taken down, right? This is enormous. This is a massive, massive event. Uh, Amazon will be shutting off our servers. There's a possibility Parla will be unavailable on the internet for up to a week as we rebuild for, by scratch. Uh, we're prepared for events for this by never relying on Amazon's proprietary infrastructure and building bare metal products. Uh, we'll try to our best to move to a new provider as we have many competing for our business. However, Amazon, Google, and Apple purposely did this as a coordinated effort, knowing our options would be limited and knowing this would inflict the most damage uh, right as President Trump is banned from, the, uh, from these tech companies. This was a coordinated attack by the tech giants to kill competition in the marketplace we were too successful too fast you can expect the war on competition and free speech to continue but don't count us out uh, that's totally true and uh after trying to get their website back up they went on fox news and uh can we play a clip they all worked together to make sure at the same time we would lose access to not only our apps but they're actually shutting all of our servers off tonight off the internet so they, they they made an attempt to not only kill the apps but to actually destroy the entire company. And it's not just these three companies. Every vendor from, um, from text message services to email providers to our lawyers all ditched us, too, on the same day. And we're going to try our best, you know, to get back online as quickly as possible, but we're having a lot of trouble because every vendor we talk to, you know, says they won't work with us because if the Apple doesn't approve and Google doesn't approve, you know, they won't. Yes, Am Amazon is the largest uh, cloud storage vendor in the world, and we use them to host our servers, you know, hundreds of them, hundreds of servers. And they gave us basically, they said, you have 24 hours to get all of your data and to find new servers. So, you know, where are you going to find 300 to 500 servers in a 24-hour window, and how can you send all of the data from everybody out to them in a 24-hour period? It's an impossible feat that, you know, we're going to handle as best we can to get back online as quickly as possible, but... You know, this is, there's just some things right. that are almost basically impossible. Right. So they have, they're effectively trying to destroy uh, Parler as a company. Uh, this is cartel behavior. This is exactly what a cartel is. And this is exactly what the antitrust laws in the U.S. are for. And they're currently in the process of going through an antitrust lawsuit. So it's actually 
quite shocking that they would be like, yeah, in the face of all of this, we're going to openly act as a cartel and deplatform the direct competition to Twitter. And there's a reason this is such like a mask off moment because you remember up till you know the election of, yeah. of Joe Biden, it's always been, oh, we've got an excuse for this, excuse yeah. that, and the dissidents have always been warning, no, no, this is just front yeah. for what they will do when they have power. And now they have their man in office and they've got the House and the Senate. You can see it. And I wanted to play this clip, which is just them in a hearing before the election took place. And you can see how everything's just become true. Yeah. Can you assure us today you're not going to try to silence conservatives? And can you assure us today you're not going to try to configure your features as Ms. Marillo said you did for Clinton in 16? Can you assure us today you're not going to do the same thing for Joe Biden in 2020? Uh, you know, you, you, you have my commitment. Uh, it's always been true and we'll continue to uh, conduct ourselves uh, in a neutral way. Appreciate it. Yield back. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon. Democrat. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to uh, redirect your attention to antitrust law rather than fringe conspiracy theories. Uh, Mr. Bezos, our investigation... Mr. Chairman, uh, we have the email. There is no fringe... Excuse me, it's not your time. Mr. Jordan, you do not have the time. Be, please but, be but, respectful but of your colleague. Someone directly, she controls directly, the time. Directly, put your mask on. Mr. Put your mask on. But yeah, you can see the... Yeah. <laughs> this has been the atmosphere for a while. Where the yeah. occasional Republican will speak about this. And he's he's engaging the conspiracy theory. Yeah. It's like, right, all of this is now under the bridge. So that's the one silver lining I get from this, which is it's the accelerated process of now everyone can see, no, they are partisan actors and they are willing to act in a partisan way. In a coordinated way in order to do as much damage as they yep. can. With each other. And against rival companies. Like Again, these are, these are all illegal actions that have been taken by Silicon Valley. And they've been taken out in the open. And it's amazing that they don't think that there's going to be a reckoning for this. Like, you would think... I would be worried about the lawsuits. You would think there would be massive lawsuits that would be incoming. And I assume that they think that Joe Biden is just going to protect them from these. I assume that they think that Joe Biden is going to be able to mitigate these things somehow. Or that the establishment itself that they're weaponizing, that they're a part of, well, is going to is going to just turn the, other, turn the other way. They've paid good money for that exactly to happen. Well... Wow. Well, yes, exactly. Anyway, so we'll get to uh, Jack Smirk. Jack Smirk, because Parler, obviously, after the deplatforming of the president, um, went to number one in the app charts, and everyone was waiting for Trump to open his Parler account. And I guess that's one of the reasons that they decided to deplatform. And so here is Jack posting a picture of the Apple charts. Um, and Signal is the top app. Now, it's interesting the way he's cropped that. So it could be that he's saying heart signal because he, both he and Elon Musk had uh, tweeted out use Signal because apparently it's very good at encryption. Now, um, I, I don't know way, uh, like whether to uh, point this out now, but like it's uh, the, the, thing, the, the interesting thing with this is that Jack has actually won both ways uh, because the little heart saying, you know, heart this, I mean, it can look like Jack's, uh, Jack's smirk at the fact that his primary competitor has just been destroyed by the establishment upon which he is a part. Uh, but there is also another way to look at this as Jack, again, winning like a snake because Signal um, was... Uh, the, the encryption code behind it was developed by a Matthew Rosenfeld, a.k.a. Moxie Marlin Spike. And he was the co-founder of Whisper Sig Systems, and he's cu the current owner of S the Signal Foundation. And Whisper Systems was purchased in 2011 by Twitter. Uh, he then left in 2013, set up Open Whisper Systems, which developed in Signal. And the fact that Jack is promoting Signal, and obviously very th thrilled that it's the top of the charts implies that there is a there's still a very close relationship between the two and i think that's a fair assumption so either way not not just in the way of jack being a playground bully who destroyed his opponents in illegitimate manner he's also one of the primary beneficiaries of the results of this like in another way so it's just like it's terrifying uh, and jack promoted signal during the black lives matter protests as a way of communicating again du like during the the destruction of hundreds of millions of dollars of, prop of property and the murder of american citizens including police jack's promoting signal as a privacy centric app uh because um he wants to allow them to communicate without the government being able to spy on them it's just all these mask-off moments. It's crazy. Uh, 
this this also got money from uh, a chap called uh, the the one one of the co-founders of Signal is a guy called Brian Acton who left Facebook. Uh, so it's <clears throat> it's weird how it kind of looks like the sort of European royalty of Silicon Valley, like the royal houses where the people marry into the different families and then their descent. And so it's it's very much like that sort of complex web in Silicon Valley. Like it's the different families that run Silicon Valley and therefore run the internet narratives. Yes. So you've got like the house house apple house yeah the house twitter. of facebook the house of twitter and exactly these people move between them but they're they're a class they're a big club and you ain't in it yeah I and mean, it's not like these people care about violence either we didn't have no. time to put it up but it's there's a there's a thing in which uh and not the bee was going around where colin kaepernick had put out a tweet and he was saying you know we need a revolution we need uh, people on the streets yeah and you can interpret it either way but it, it looks like he's calling for violence and during like if, during if, the violence of the blm the riots I mean, yeah and if a trump supporter had tweeted that right now they'd be gone in a yeah. second and the response from jack dorsey was to give him three million dollars in donations from himself yeah. it's like right so this person doesn't care no. about violence no in fact he's he's willing to help it out as you've shown with signal it's partisan <laughs>